What up, y'all? Rap Critic here, and it's about that time to look at the worst lyrics I've ever heard this year. But before we get started, if you like the video and want to support, head on over to either my Kofi or my Patreon. The Kofi is for one-time donations where you can make music, movie, or stream requests, and the Patreon is for ongoing donations where you get to see the next episode before it goes live, as well as join the RC Discord and check out all the other fun stuff I've got coming down the pipeline. So if I gave you a few laughs, hey, consider sending a few dollars in return. Yeah, that feels like a fair exchange, right? I mean, I'm giving you the content for free first, and I don't even know who you are. Come on, look at the trust that's happening here. I like you, I do. Okay, so I think this line in Doja Cat's verse is supposed to be about how she likes the guy she's with because he's not trying to tie her down with a bunch of arbitrary relationship obligations. But wait, what is a leash other than a collection of strings that specifically attaches you to one person? And I know it's supposed to be a kinky angle she's going for here, you know, no serious romantic relationship, just the fun bondage stuff, but I can't take the lyric that way because if you bring up the euphemism of no strings attached, meanwhile he has you on a one-way string attachment, it kind of sounds like he just doesn't want you to be with anyone else. And if you're okay with that dynamic, then fine, but with the way the sentence is laid out, it seems like the sentiment of what she wants is an obligation-free affair where no one owes the other one loyalty. But if the sentence goes, he puts me on a leash because he doesn't want strings attached, I, uh, my brain is rupturing from the contradiction here. Okay, I mean, she seems fine with it, so her choice, uh, uh, female empowerment, I guess, I, I don't f know. Uh, push a pee. So I know you guys were probably expecting the Pesbian line to be on here. She not a lesbian for pee, she turned pesbian. But as corny as that lyric is, at the very least, it has some sort of logical through line. They're so good at pushing their peas that even a chick who doesn't like dudes would be on board. You know, I understand why he's saying what he's saying. I just want a cup of water. What the f is up with this lyric? Like, w is, is he really just submitting to public record that he had sex with a cup of water? I just want a cup of water. I mean, the, the background ad libs seem to be confirming it, but why, why would you feel the need to share that? Nobody needs to know the weird American pie type shit you get up to in your spare time. Thugatar, the way with a cup of water. And you know, I'm always trying to give rappers the benefit of the doubt that if there's a weird sounding phrase, it's usually some colloquial slang, but what else could I just f***ed a cup of water possibly mean? I guess rappers say water when they talk about their jewelry sometimes, so what, did he encrust his penis in diamonds? Or maybe he's talking about a chick he was with that was super wet, but alarmingly spacious. I, I just don't know where else you could go here. It just seems like he wanted to tell us that he had assuredly unsatisfying sex with a water in a glass. I mean, yeah, it's your body. Do what you want. I, I, I guess we're just learning a lot about rappers' kinks this year. Wait, do, do rappers with grills not brush their teeth? Oh, oh man. There are so many rappers I do not want to meet face to face with now. Okay, so this one's a little complex to explain and involves talking about sexual abuse. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to risk getting demonetized out here. But I felt it necessary to put it on here and to preempt it by saying that when I listen to the song, I can tell he earnestly is trying to do some good here, but it just didn't quite stick the landing in my eyes. Cause see, he gets into really dark territory about how the black community is steeped in denial of abuse, going all the way back to slavery and all the post-traumatic slave syndrome that set the black community on the path it's currently on. The devastation, heart and generations, and humanity, they raped our mothers, and they raped our sisters, and they made us watch psychotic torture between our lives. We ain't recovered, still living as victims. And he offers his family up as an example, detailing his mother's abuse by another family member and how it prompted distrust in the family, leading them to constantly be questioning if a cousin had done the same to him. Family ties, they accused my cousin, did he touch you, Kendrick? Never lied, but no one believed me when I said he did it. But since he was a kid and unable to comprehend the deeper implications of what was going on, it led to constant self-doubt and insecurity. Frozen moments, still holding on it, hard to trust myself, I started rhyming, coping mechanisms to lift up myself. The issue lies in when it gets to the end, where Kendrick takes it upon himself to forgive all abusers. So I said free the hearts filled with hatred, keep our bodies sacred, as I said free all your abusers, this is transformation. And it's like, ooh, oh, wow, Drick, I, I'm not sure this is the way to go about this. And, like, uh, all the abusers, even the ones that are still actively abusing? Because, in effect, this line is Kendrick, a person who hasn't suffered assault, telling survivors that he forgives those who abuse them. Like, hey man, shouldn't that be left to the people that were assaulted? Because saying, I forgive all the people who abused me, is a bit of an easier statement to swallow than, hey, you know all those people who abused you? Well, I forgive them. 
And the thing that magnifies the uneasiness of this line is that the album this is from contains two guest appearances from Kodak Black, a dude who has been notoriously controversial for his assault charges, as well as some pretty colorist remarks in regards to black women. Now don't get me wrong, I absolutely believe in restorative justice. The idea that someone can make amends and be welcomed back into a community, that we shouldn't just kick someone out as soon as you make a mistake. But, you know, you actually have to do something to show that you've changed and learned from your past. And the thing is, Kodak has two chances to say something on an album with themes of forgiveness and reconciliation. And he just kinda doesn't. I ain't gonna lie, we were both. A bunch of lost souls in survival mode. They want to wait for us unless we find our own. No addressing the allegations, no display of remorse or guilt over anything, just general platitudes about how he had to struggle and do desperate things because he was poor. So it's like, Kendrick's waving this guy in front of us as if to say, hey, shouldn't we all let bygones be bygones and forgive? Meanwhile, the person you're pushing as an example of who to forgive has two separate recording sessions where they didn't even admit to what they did wrong? Like, how are people supposed to take this? How's anyone supposed to feel in the forgiven nature when all you hear about in his verses is just him waxing on about how hard his life was? Like, come on, if someone did something really sh to you, and the next time they saw you they said, Yeah, I know I ran over your dog after I stole your car and drove it into a lake, but, you know, I stubbed my toe earlier, so you gotta understand, I was really unhappy. Like, no, no one's trying to hear that! At best, you'd say, okay, everyone has a hard life. That was no excuse to be a dick to me specifically. And you know, if Kodak had said something to the effect of showing remorse, that'd be one thing. It would be forcing us to reconcile with the ideas of restorative justice. Can you truly forgive someone and move past it if they come to you heart in hand to make amends? But he doesn't do that. There's no looking his demons in the face or expressing remorse. No, it's just, hey, now we're supposed to forgive everyone. But if I were to grab you and go, Psh, hey, you know you're supposed to forgive people, right? Psh, Hey, you know what you're supposed to forgive people, right? Uh, that would ring kind of hollow, don't you think? Because in the eyes of those who are being affected, forgiveness, without any changed behavior, is essentially just permission to keep doing the bad behavior. Because it signals that you're going to forgive them without them actually doing anything. And I put this on here because, honestly, I see what Kendrick's trying to do, and I think it's a noble effort. He's trying to use his music as a tool to heal the rifts made in the black community, and even with what he's done, Kodak's part of that community too, and so I understand not wanting to leave brothers behind, wanting to see growth and change in even the most gutterhood dude, because, well, what made them into who they are is the conditions that they had no control over and could only respond to, and it would be awesome to see that change demonstrated in Kodak Black and how he moves going forward. Like, to be completely real with you, it would be so cool if he came across this video and really took a moment to say, damn, you know what, he's got a point. Let's actually take some steps to make things better. Let's throw some money to some charities for assault victims. I'm gonna go to therapy. Let's use this money and resources I have to do some outreach and start repairing the fabric torn by centuries of oppression. But I know that shit ain't happening. At best, he's gonna see the part about me ripping on a song and get angry about it, but I'm like, damn it, I, want, I legitimately want things to get better for the black community, you know? Like, can someone at least make sure he also sees the part with the heartfelt plea to use his resources to help the community heal? It? Oh, of course no one's gonna do that. Well, if you are watching this, and not just an out-of-context Twitter clip, and you still feel angry about me ripping on your songs, well, hey now. I've been dealing with some foot pain lately, so, you know, if we're gonna be consistent here, I, hey, I've had hardships too, so, you know, it's water under the bridge now. I, everything's cool, we're good. And if you're still just so pissed off and just can't let it go because I'm clearly not showing remorse for my actions. Well, you can you see how the abuse victims are feeling? Are, are the dots connecting now? But ah, it's all good because, you know, by their logic, I don't have to change my behavior. Remember, Kendrick already forgave me for anything I do. So, <laughs> well, all right, let's get to the next lyric then. Say I demand my respect, nah, I mean. Oh, that's right. Kodak is a man who lives every aspect of his life in a way that commands respect. I demand my respect. Wait, you you spent a whole bunch of money on a plane just just to get a hot girl to hug you? So you're just the really rich equivalent of the where's my hug at guy? I'm slamming in the vents. I'm slamming in the vents. I don't really care for sex. I ain't getting none in a month. Nah, nah, I, I don't really care about sex. I'm just willing to shell out literally thousands of dollars just so a woman will hug me. <laughs> Well, while we wait for Kodak to absorb the healing power of unconditional forgiveness, I'm going to get started on part two of this video. But if you're a patron, you get to see part two now as soon as this video goes up. So if you want to check it out, plus all the other exclusive stuff, go to patreon.com slash rapcritic. Or if you're just a patient soul who's willing to wait, hit the subscribe button and the bell afterwards so your patience will be rewarded as soon as it's available live. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the other side. Peace.